In a recent video, I talked about how Panasonic was building their own battery factory in Kansas and how this battery factory would supply batteries to Tesla. But as a follow up to that, I recently had a conversation with somebody who gave me more information and really a lot of context around this Tesla and Panasonic uh, battery manufacturing dynamic. So in this video, this is the first video of a series and I want to talk about the differences between Tesla's 4680 battery technology and uh, Panasonic's 4680 battery technology. It may actually surprise you that these two batteries appear to be quite different. So without further ado, let's dive into the details. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. I think it's important here that we start this video with a little bit of context about the 4680 battery and how Panasonic fits in. According to the reliable source that I spoke with that I mentioned in the intro of the video, who actually has asked to remain anonymous, um, when Tesla came out with the 4680 battery technology, of course, we all heard about it at battery day, but um, Panasonic actually, according to my source, only knew about this battery technology sometime around four weeks before Tesla announced it to the world. I know that actually really surprised me as well. That probably surprises you. I thought Panasonic knew about this battery technology much in advance, but from what I can tell, Panasonic only learned about this battery technology literally somewhere around a month before Tesla revealed it to the world. Apparently at first, Tesla's plan was to solely produce 4680 batteries themselves and not have other battery manufacturers make them as well. But when Tesla started encountering problems with manufacturing these battery cells, they turned to Panasonic and started asking them if they could also manufacture these battery cells. But according to my source, there was a catch to Tesla's request because Tesla was really reluctant to share their dry battery electrode and their tabless battery technology with Panasonic. The source I spoke with mentioned that after conversations with Tesla about Panasonic's manufacturing 4680 batteries for Tesla, it became very clear that Panasonic would need to develop their own battery technology and their own 4680 batteries. Thus, when it comes down to the actual batteries that we have today, the samples that Panasonic sent to Tesla recently, and uh, the 4680 batteries that are currently found in the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, those two batteries are apparently quite different. One of the big differences between Tesla's 4680 batteries and Panasonic's 4680 batteries, once again, according to the source that I spoke with, is the fact that Panasonic's 4680 battery apparently has tabs, whereas Tesla's 4680 battery technology is tabless. Now, since the 4680 battery technology was revealed at battery day in 2020, I was under the impression, and I think many others were under the impression, that the tabless technology that Tesla developed for these battery cells was really a very crucial technology that made these battery cells viable in the first place. But apparently, Panasonic has found another way, and I now believe with my research that it is possible to create a 4680 battery with tabs that can still have good performance. Last year, I put out a very detailed video discussing Tesla's tabless technology with details from a Tesla patent that was published, and I discussed the benefits of this technology and how it made the 4680 battery so impressive. I definitely recommend that you check out that video if you're interested in this topic, and I will put a link to it in the video description, but really in short, it's all about heat generation. At battery day, Drew Baglino mentioned that the electrical path with the tabless battery was reduced from 250 millimeters to only 50 millimeters in the new 4680 tabless battery cell, which represented a five times decrease in the electrical path. This electric path reduction and other engineering tweaks in Tesla's tabless design um, allows for lower heat generation within the cell and greatly reduces the electrical current and temperature variations within the battery cell. In addition, this tabless design allows for better heat dissipation through the ends of the battery cells as well. When you combine this all together, this helps eliminate a lot of the thermal issues that you normally have with a large battery cell. 
As Tesla demonstrated at Battery Day when they put up this slide, by removing the thermal issues normally associated with a large battery cell, Tesla's tabless design allows for these large format 46 millimeter diameter batteries to charge at speeds nearly equal to their 21 millimeter diameter batteries. So with all that being said, this really brings up the question, how could Panasonic have a 4680 battery with tabs and still have good performance? When I got to the part of the conversation with a source that I've been mentioning, where we were talking about Panasonic's 4680 batteries, it was mentioned that Panasonic's battery, their 4680 battery, actually has tabs, and very likely it has five tabs. It was also mentioned that Tesla's early iterations of the 4680 batteries also had tabs, but Tesla wanted to eliminate the complexities and really the potential issues that arise with these complexities involved with welding more tabs to the battery cell top and bottom. So apparently a multi-tab design will work. It's just a little more complicated to manufacture. It is important to point out that Panasonic has a lot of experience reliably manufacturing battery cells. And so if they're confident with their 4680 battery design with five tabs or so, I really don't see performance being an issue. Now, when it comes to how a 4680 battery, say with five tabs, would actually work, I found a great article on allaboutcircuits.com, and this article explains that in large batteries with large electrodes, the electrons have a much longer path to travel to reach the terminal ends of the battery, and in the end, this causes increased heat generation in a battery unless it is addressed. Tesla's tabless battery technology design is one great way to solve this problem, but apparently a multi-tab design like Panasonic apparently has will work as well. Once again, a battery design with say five tabs or so, this adds more complexity to the manufacturing, but Panasonic appears confident that they can reliably manufacture these battery cells. Now beyond just the tabs versus tabless design difference between the 4680 batteries, um, my source also mentioned that the Panasonic batteries are also not using the dry battery electrode processes that Tesla is developing. As I and others have mentioned in the past, one of the key technologies that Tesla is currently developing for their 4680 batteries is their dry battery electrode manufacturing process, which greatly reduces the space needed to manufacture their electrodes because it eliminates the wet mixing and also the drying ovens that are normally needed. In the end, when you switch from a wet electrode manufacturing process to Tesla's dry battery electrode manufacturing processes, according to what they showed at battery day, this leads to somewhere around a 10 times footprint reduction for this part of the battery manufacturing process. Technologies like this definitely make Tesla's plan to build Terra factories seem very possible. Now in an upcoming video, I wanna talk about this topic a little further, but as I've mentioned, Tesla is having some issues with ramping up production of these 4680 batteries, and it appears like a lot of the issues revolve around this dry battery electrode manufacturing process. Recently, Jordan from the YouTube channel, The Limiting Factor, did a teardown of a Tesla 4680 battery cell, which he mentioned was somewhere around six months old when he made the video. And his teardown revealed that the anode was manufactured with a dry battery electrode process. However, the cathode of that battery was apparently manufactured with a wet process. Elon Musk even mentioned in the Q2 2022 conference call that one of the big issues they were having right now came down to the feeding of these anode and cathode materials with their dry battery electrode processes. In an upcoming video, I'll talk more about Tesla's 4680 battery production ramp, um, giving insight from the conversation that I recently had with the source that I've been mentioning. But moving back to Panasonic, it makes a lot of sense why they would stick with the wet process manufacturing for the electrodes um, because it's a proven process and it allows them to make those batteries right now. Maybe in the future, once Tesla really figures out all the kinks with this dry battery electrode manufacturing process, they'll share that technology with Panasonic. Who knows, but nonetheless, the wet process definitely still works. It just takes more space. Okay, so we've talked about the differences between Tesla's 4680 battery and Panasonic's 4680 battery, at least the differences that we know. I'd like now to move over to how Panasonic is progressing with developing this 4680 battery and talk more about their progress. 
Between late 2020 and now, Panasonic has been working in Japan to develop these 4680 battery cells. And now, according to this Inside EVs article that was put out on June 2nd, Panasonic has shipped these 4680 battery samples to Tesla. And this article also mentions that in Panasonic's fiscal year 2023, they hope to start mass production of these 4680 batteries at a factory in Japan. The source that I spoke with mentioned that Panasonic was very confident in the 4680 battery sample cells that they sent to Tesla, and now they just need to build out the machines that will manufacture these batteries at massive scale, and then they can really ramp this up. Now, I did want to talk about something really quickly as we close up this video and really um, provide more context to something I talked about earlier when I mentioned that Panasonic was building their own battery factory in the United States. As I recently talked about it in a video, according to this Nikkei Asia article, uh, Panasonic was investing quite a bit of money in building a battery factory in Kansas. And this article mentioned that this factory would produce a new high capacity battery for Tesla. I assumed, as others have assumed, that this factory would build 4680 batteries. But apparently, according to the source that I spoke with, at least initially, it will produce 2170 battery cells. And Panasonic's 4680 battery development and production will stay in Japan, at least for now. I mention this just really to correct what a lot of other people are saying and what I said in the past. And according to the source, once again, this factory that Panasonic is building in Kansas will at least initially build 2170 battery cells. And this really leads to the next video that I want to do in this series. And in that video, I want to talk about why Panasonic is building their own battery factory and not expanding Gigafactory Nevada. In the end, it's going to be really interesting to see how these Panasonic made 4680 batteries compare to Tesla's tablet batteries when it comes to performance and charging. But nonetheless, I have a lot of confidence in Panasonic's ability to reliably manufacture battery cells. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I would like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.